What is up guys? My name is Lex. We are back here at Palm Beach Kennel Club. We're going to be playing 2-5, 500 cap today. Hope you guys enjoy this video. We're going to get right to the action. Let's go. It's a weekday around 2 p.m. so the average age of the players in the poker room is around 107 years old so the action's a little slow to begin with but it definitely heats up later on. Let's get to the table and get to our first hand. We get seated at our table, we buy in for $500, which is the max. Our first hand of note here, we have Pocket Kings, Under the Gun, Raised to 20, Next to Act Player Calls, The Cutoff, A Pretty Good Action Player Calls as well, and The Big Blind Calls. Going four ways to the board of Queen, Four, Deuce, Two Hearts. On this kind of board texture with the King of Hearts, we elect to check. The board is pretty dry and we don't need much protection holding the King of Hearts, so we're trying to get someone to bet with a worse hand or a bluff, and unfortunately it checks all the way around to the turn, which is the Three of Hearts, so it gives us now a King High Flush Draw, Big Blind checks, and now it's back on us. We put out a bet of $60 trying to get value from any heart, any ace, any five, or possibly someone with an unbelieving pair like pocket nines, pocket tens, or pocket eights with a heart. So the next act player basically snap calls our $60 bet, now it is on the cutoff, and he goes into the tank thinking for a while. After about 45 seconds, he puts in the $60, which is looking good for us. None of our opponents raised, and neither of them bet on the flop, so it looks like we have the best hand here a majority of the time, going here to the river. Which comes to deuce of spades, total brick. We bet $80 in the 265, trying to get thin value, and the next act player snap calls our $80 bet. And now the cutoff thinks, looks at his cards, and folds, so we show our pocket kings, assuming they are good a lot of the time, and the next act player shows ace five of clubs. Some days the big pocket pairs are not going to hold up, and today that was the case for our pocket king, so on to the next hand. It folds all the way around to us, and we open up king five of clubs on the button to $15. A little loose, but we want to play hands here in position against these two players. Dealer puts out six five three, two diamonds, one club. We flop a pair in a backdoor flush draw. Big blind leads out for $30, kind of an interesting spot, and we just make the call. I think he's leading here with a lot of sixes, some fours, and flush draws, so we call. We're going to see what develops here on the turn. Turn is a three, pairs the board, doesn't give us any extra equity. Our opponent bets $30, super small bet, same as on the flop, and I guess now he's just wrapping a six. So now I start to think, can I bluff him off of his hand if I raise to maybe $100 and then shove the river, but he doesn't have that much left. He only has about 200 ish behind, so we elect to just call, looking to maybe take it away on any scare cards on the river, any card over a six, or possibly a diamond we can try to bluff. Our five could also still be good. He could be betting here with flush draws and straight draws. So the river comes out the queen of diamonds, and now he is thinking for a little bit of time, and he puts in a bet of $40. So this really just doesn't make much sense. What he's saying is that he led into me with a flush draw, and on the turn when the board paired, he led again for a small bet, and then the river, he finally hit his flush, and now he's betting $40 into 165 I don't buy it. I put him all in, trying to get him off any pair, and he goes into the tank. He has about $185 behind, obviously looking for a fold here. Going with my read here that he doesn't have a flush, trying to put pressure on one pair of hands, I just don't buy it, and he ends up folding, and I wouldn't recommend this play with just a short stack behind, but it looks like we got it through. We might have even had the best hand, but either way, we are scooping this pot. We get a table change before picking up our first premium pocket pair of the night, Pocket Jacks. There's an early position limp, and we raise it up to $25 before getting three bet in the cutoff by an older gentleman to $75. We look at his stack, he's about $250 behind. This is most likely a big pocket pair. I don't see them three betting too light here. So we call, trying to set mine. If we hit a jack, we could probably stack this guy. Flop is king eight nine rainbow, and he just jams all in after we check. And we fold, he shows us black pocket aces. Let's talk about this real quick. He played fine pre-flop, raising to $75, but the pot is only $150, and he goes all in for $250 on a king 8 9 board, and I just don't really get this play. I guess he just wants the hand to be over with, and I do see this a lot with older recreational players, but this is definitely not how you want to play aces. It's basically like they're playing scared money. They just want the hand to be over with. They want to bet all in. They don't want me to call, even though he has a really great hand on this board. I didn't four bet preflop, so I shouldn't have pocket kings. I can really only have pocket eights and pocket nines that's beating him, so I don't really understand this over pot size bet. I bring this up so it can be an example for you guys how not to play your aces. You want to bet for value, but a sizing that your players can call you with, with worse hands, not so big that you're only getting called by hands that are beating you. All right, on to the next hand. We end up losing the minimum. Definitely can't complain about that. We are in the under the gun position. We have queen and jack of hearts. Raise it up to $20. We get three callers to a flop that is super dry. Deuce, three, deuce, one heart. We see bet as a bluff. We bet $50. Our opponents think for a little bit of time and end up folding. So we take down this pot with this suited Broadway. 
In this next hand, the under the gun player makes it $15. We look down at Ace King offsuit and three bet to 75. We want to get it all in with him. He has about $140 behind. He was playing tons of hands, rebought numerous times. I think he was on his fourth buy in and his fourth beer. So he puts it all in. We snap call, running it once here with Ace King. Flop comes out ace high, and I just show my ace right away. Turn card to seven, river ten. I show ace king, and he is pretty happy to show ace ten offsuit, so he rivered us. I get so tilted about this bad beat that I try to flip over the table, and I end up cussing this guy out. They end up kicking me out, so that's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Just kidding, I'm not that tilted yet. We end up paying this guy his $140 and muck our hand, trying to play it cool, try to take the loss like a champ. But on the inside, we are steaming, already tilted, and it's only the first hour of the day. The very next hand here, we have a seven of diamonds under the gun and raise it up to 20. Hijack calls 20, the cutoff calls 20, and the small blind calls 20. So three ways to the flop of ace, jack, nine with one diamond. We flop top pair and bet $30, trying to get value from any jack, any nine, open-ended, or worse, ace, and the cutoff calls 30, and the small blind calls 30. Turn card six of clubs, this does not help us or hurt us, kind of a neutral card, and given the fact that we have a seven kicker, not the best, we decide to check, and the cutoff checks, so we're definitely beating him. The river pairs the board, it is an offsuit nine, and now the small blind leads out for $100. As you can see, I snap call 100, cut off folds. He shows us 9-3 of clubs, so he rivered trips. I guess I could have hero folded the river, but the way the hand played out, I think I just have to call. All right, some run bad definitely in store for us today in the early hours of this session. According to YouTube, 78% of you are watching the videos and not subscribed, and I don't really understand why. Of all the Caucasian 5'7", 180 pound poker vloggers out there, I'm definitely the best, so hit that sub button, show your boy some love. In this hand, there's a $10 button straddle. We call $5 more with ace-5 of spades in the big blind. Middle position player calls, and the button checks his option. Going to the flop, which is pretty awesome for us. Ace-jack, deuce, two spades. We flop top pair, nut flush draw. Checks around. Turn card is a 5, so now we have two pair. We lead out for $15 into 30. Only the middle position player calls. Queen of hearts on the turn. We miss our flush, but we still have two pair. The middle position player ended up checking the flop and then just called our bet on the turn, so I don't expect him to be too strong. We bet $30 hoping he might call us here with a jack or he possibly hit a hand like queen 10 or king queen and he thinks for a while and does something I was not expecting. He slides in a raise. He raises it up to $100. So this is a pretty gross spot, especially because this player was playing pretty conservative all night. Now we break this hand down. He limped pre-flop, so he shouldn't have any sets like pocket jacks or pocket queens. He shouldn't have ace queen because he didn't bet the flop. A hand he could have is queen jack because he would check that on the flop. He would call that on the turn, and now he might be raising two pair on the river. I got to think of more hands that I'm beating. I'm beating hands like queen five suited, queen deuce suited, hands that he might limp in pre-flop, hands like jack five suited that he decides to now raise for value on the river, but that's pretty ambitious. It was a limp pot, so he can have any suited jack, two pair, or queen two pair this is a weird spot i'm obviously losing to king 10 all the combos of that because i could be beating a lot of two pairs and i'm only losing to one hand i call and he shows us that one hand that beats us king 10 offsuit he hit the two outer on the river because the queen of spades was no good running pretty bad this session we lose another pot all right, time to run better. We have pocket kings again. We raised to $20 and get three callers. The player on the button was super action. His stack was going up and down all night. Flop comes out 855 rainbow, super dry board. We check to induce the action player to bet. He does not. Turn card is the worst card in the deck. It's the ace. We check and it checks all the way around again. River is the nine of clubs. Now we're going to go for a little value when it checks to us. We're going to put out a bet here trying to get called by any pair, maybe even a nine they hit on the river or possibly king high, someone who doesn't believe us. We bet $55, the button thinks for a little bit of time and just calls, which means we're definitely good and we show our pocket kings. So we do win a little pot here going in the right direction. After this hand, we're only down about $500, so definitely could be worse, trending in the right direction. In this hand, there is a late position limp. The cutoff makes it $25. We look down at ace queen on the button. I don't do much 3-betting from this position because I like to play hands multi-way when I'm last to act, but this time we decide to raise to 80. We want to isolate this guy with a big stack while we're in position. He ends up folding, showing a king, and we take down this pot, 3-betting ace-queen. This is definitely the hand of the night. There is a limp. We raise it up to $25 with pocket nines on the button. The opponent now says to me, all right, I'll give you some action, and calls 25, so that's what we like to hear. We haven't hit a set all day. Maybe this is our time. The dealer puts out queen nine six. We flop middle set on a super wet and connected board. The opponent checks to us. We bet $30. 
The action's back on him, and he throws out a black $100 chip and says, Raise, this is music to my ears. This is looking great for us. I look at his stack. He has about $280 behind, so now we have to think, what should we do? Should we flat call? Should we put in another raise? I'm not going to be slow playing this hand here. There's way too many bad turn cards. An ace, a king, a heart. Anything can kill our action. We raise it up to $205. This 3-bet on the flop is hardly ever a bluff, but my opponent probably isn't thinking too much into the hand that way, so he thinks for a little bit of time before shoving all in, all the money's going in the middle, we snap call the biggest pot of the night so far, running at once here with middle set, let's hold. If he has a queen, he's basically drawing dead, if he has a flush draw, we got a fade of heart, turn 5 of clubs, river, deuce of spades, we show our hand, we are good, we end up stacking this guy, holding up here with our set of 9s. He told me after the hand he had king-queen with the king of hearts, so I'm definitely glad it didn't come heart-hard, and I guess it's kind of a cooler for him, but I don't think he needs to be losing his whole stack. Either way, we're scooping these chips and getting that much closer to even on the day. We play for another hour or two, don't pick up any more notable hands, so we end up calling it quits for the night. In total, we were in the game for $1,500, cashed out for $1,293, so ended up losing $207 on this session. All right, so if you guys have been watching the vlogs here, you can see that last month in March, I had the best month of my poker career, made ridiculous amounts of money, had a huge upswing, and things were just going perfect, which is awesome. Obviously, every poker player loves that and wants that to happen, but there are a lot of days and throughout the years that I've been playing that are just like today. What I mean by that is just running slow, running kind of bad like I did, losing those hands with ace-king and ace-7 and stuff like that. And then obviously just not picking up any hands. So I just fold for a while. I can't pick up any premiums. I just can't really have any playable hands. So basically anybody can flop sets and cool your opponents. Anybody can flop a straight or flop a flush and win big pots, but I really think the difference between someone who crushes the game or beats the game consistently and an average or losing player is how you react when you're running bad, when you're running slow, when you're card dead. Are you able to stay disciplined, stay patient, or do you just start getting bored and start playing a bunch of hands or punt off your stack? I felt like this was definitely something to talk about after last month and basically posting all these wins and huge, basically huge profits that obviously every day is not like that. I've been playing for three years and I have to go through these slight downswings or just basically breaking even times. And I'm really trying to not punt off money during those times, not get on tilt and just lose the minimum in every pot. And eventually I will come out of it and go back on an upswing. So if you guys are dealing with either a downswing or possibly just a break even period, just try to play your best. Try not to punt off any money. Try to stay disciplined and patient and eventually if you're playing good, it will turn around and you'll start crushing the game too. All right, that is it for this one. We are done. We're out of here. I'll see you.